Hi all, welcome to new IAS daily current affairs session. Today we will see the news pieces of 10th November. First of all, we will see the contents of today's discussion. As you can see, they are Simbex, CCI, National Legal Services Day, Ralph and Lucy, Bionic Mushrooms, AI Anchors, Double Jeopardy, then our daily PQRS session and Math Study. So we'll move on to the topics one by one. First is Simbex 2018. Simbex is Singapore-India Maritime Bilateral Exercise. It is an acronym. Then India and Singapore will hold the 25th Joint Naval Exercise in the Andaman Sea and the Bay of Bengal during this week. Then this year's exercise is special because Simbex 2018 will mark the silver jubilee of the exercise. That means 25 years of the exercise. And it will be the largest edition since 1994 in terms of scale and complexity. Also, the number of missiles and torpedoes firing in this exercise, it will be the largest ever undertaken by the Indian Navy with any foreign Navy till date. So that's all regarding Simbex. Now the second topic of the day is Competition Commission of India. So the CCI or the Competition Commission of India is a quasi-judicial statutory body which is established under the Competition Act of 2002 and it functions under the Ministry of Corporate Affairs. Then uh, regarding the function of CCI, it aims to eliminate practices that adversely affect competition in different industries and also protect the interest of consumers and ensure freedom of trade. Then why it came into news? It came into news because the appointments committee of the cabinet headed by our Prime Minister Narendra Modi has appointed former IAS officer Ashok Kumar Gupta as the chairperson of CCI. So uh, three points are to be noted. First is regarding uh, the data of CCI, then about the appointment of chairman of CCI, who appoints, and finally the appointments committee of the parliament, which is headed by the prime minister of India. So now let's move on to the next topic, National Legal Services Day. National Legal Services Day is observed every year in India on 9th of November to spread awareness for ensuring reasonable, fair and justice procedure. It was started by the Supreme Court of India in 1995 to provide help and support to poor and weaker sections of the society. Then the weaker and poor sections of the society, they may be women, disabled persons, scheduled caste, then children, scheduled tribes, human trafficking victims, as well as victims of natural calamities. Then our next important topic of the day is Ralph and Lucy. NASA's Ralph and Lucy, they are all set to explore Jupiter's Trojan asteroids which are remnants from the earliest days of our solar system. Now you will see more about uh, Ralph and Lucy. Ralph is actually a space instrument that has traveled as far as Pluto. And about Lucy, it is a mission payload or uh, the spacecraft which would be carrying various scientific instruments including Ralph to study the properties of the asteroid. So uh, the mission scheduled for launch in October 2021, it would be the very first space mission to study the Trojans. Now, what are the Trojans actually? The Jupiter Trojans, commonly called as Trojan asteroids or simply Trojans, they are a group of uh, asteroids that share the planet Jupiter's orbit around the Sun. They orbit the Sun in two loose groups. One group is always ahead of the Jupiter, which is called as the Greek camp, while the other is always behind. That is called as the Trojan camp. So that's all about the topic. Then the next topic of the day is bionic mushrooms. Scientists, including those of Indian origin, they have created a bionic device that generates green power by 3D printing clusters of cyanobacteria on an ordinary white button mushroom. So what is bionics? Bionics or biologically inspired engineering is the application of biological methods and systems found in nature to the study and design of engineering systems and modern technology. So how mushrooms are used in this? It is done by integrating cyanobacteria that can produce electricity with a nanoscale material capable of collecting the current. That means an ordinary white mushroom is made bionic by supercharging it with clusters of cyanobacteria that creates electricity and graphene nano ribbons can collect the generated current. And the bionic mushroom this develops, it can produce electricity. So, uh, since we have already mentioned about cyanobacteria, not all of us will be knowing about this. So, cyanobacteria are a phylum of bacteria that obtain their energy through photosynthesis. And uh, they are the only photosynthetic prokaryotes able to produce oxygen. And it got its name from the color of the bacteria, which is greenish blue. 
cyanobacteria which are prokaryotes they are also called as blue green algae and uh, please don't confuse this with algae algae are actually eukaryotes and this is only blue green algae and it is a prokaryote now the next topic is ai anchors ai as you know is artificial intelligence xinhua china's state controlled news agency they unveiled a pair of ai powered virtual news anchors it is said to be the world's first virtual news anchors AI anchors are quite similar to human anchors. Uh, they are synthetic robots programmed to emulate real anchors to present news or other content. Then uh, the next topic of the day is double jeopardy. Double jeopardy means punishing a person twice for the same offense. It came up in news because uh, the Supreme Court of India held that the bar of double jeopardy it does not arise if an accused was discharged of a criminal offense before facing a trial. But the Constitution of India bars double jeopardy in Article 20. It mandates that a person cannot be prosecuted or punished twice for the same offence. Then, now we will see some doctrines of Indian Constitution. First is the doctrine of basic structure. The basic structure doctrine is a principle that the Constitution of India has certain basic features that cannot be altered or destroyed through amendments by the Parliament. And this applies only to constitutional amendments. Now the second one is the doctrine of eclipse. The doctrine of eclipse means that an existing law inconsistent with a fundamental right though becomes inoperative from the date of the commencement of the constitution, it is not dead altogether. It is overshadowed by the fundamental right but it remains dormant, not dead. Then uh, the next is the doctrine of colorable legislation. The literal meaning of colorable legislation is that under the color or guise of power conferred for one particular purpose, the legislature cannot seek to achieve some other purpose which is otherwise not competent to legislate on. Then the next is the doctrine of waiver. The doctrine of waiver is based on the premise that a person is his best judge and that he has the liberty to waive the enjoyment of such rights as are conferred on him by the state. Then the next is the doctrine of harmonious construction. The doctrine or the rule of harmonious construction is adopted when there is a conflict between two or more statutes or between the parts or provisions of the statutes. As per this doctrine, the courts try to avoid conflicts between the provisions of the statutes. Then uh, the next is the doctrine of pith and substance. Pith and substance is a legal doctrine in Canadian constitutional interpretation used to determine under which head of power a given piece of legislation falls. And this doctrine is primarily used when a law is challenged on the basis that one level of government has encroached upon the exclusive jurisdiction of another level of government. Then comes the doctrine of incidental or ancillary powers. This means that the power to legislate on a subject also includes the power to legislate on ancillary matters that are reasonably connected to that subject. Then comes the doctrine of severability. It says, Suppose if any of the provisions in an act or statute is contrary to fundamental rights, then that provision only would consider being void and it is not the whole act that becomes void. Then another thing is that it is a guardian of the fundamental right. So next comes the doctrine of territorial nexus. It says that laws made by a state legislature are not applicable outside the state except when there is a sufficient nexus between the state and the object. So that's all regarding the basic doctrines. Next, we'll move on to our daily PQRS session. So our question comes from uh, environment asked in 2012. The question is, consider the following. One is black necked crane, then two cheetah, three flying squirrel, and four snow leopard. Which of the above are naturally found in India? Please note, uh, the question is naturally found in India. The options, you can see A, B, C, D, so, from the options, we can eliminate cheetah because it is not naturally found in India. Earlier it was found in India, but due to habitat loss and poaching, they no longer exist in India naturally. So, when we eliminate two, we can stri strike off the options A, C and D. And thus, we are left with B. So, the answer is B, option B. Now, Snow leopards and flying squirrels, they are found in India. Flying squirrels are found in Arunachal Pradesh and Madhya Pradesh. We already know Namtafa flying squirrel. Then snow leopards are found in the Himalayan region. 
Now, regarding the black neck crane, it is revered in Buddhist tradition and culturally protected across much of its range. The Indian state of Jammu and Kashmir considers it as the state bird and it is evaluated as vulnerable in the IUCN red list. Now, that's all regarding the PQRS session. Now, we will move on to the map aided program. For that, we have Pakyong Airport. In news, we all heard recently that Pakyong Airport was inaugurated by our Prime Minister. It is a greenfield airport near Gangtok. Gangtok is the state capital of Sikkim, so the airport is in Sikkim. Then it is one of the five highest airports in India. And some other interesting facts about the airport is that it is also the first greenfield airport to be constructed in the northeastern region of India. And it is the 100th operational airport in India. And it is the only airport in the state of Sikkim. Then prior to the construction of Pakyong Airport, Sikkim had been the sole state in India possessing no functional airport. So as I said, it is the only functional airport in Sikkim. Then, uh, since the airport is approximately 60 kilometers from the India-China border, it is also considered strategically important. So, that's all regarding the topic. Thank you so much for listening.